Now that I give you the analysis of the races to watch and what could determine it, let's bring in John Dick, Civic Science. It's great to have you, brother. Good Thank to you see so you, much. Christopher. Good to be uh, back. Thank you for doing this. Now, you heard everything I said. Every word. I did not see any look of complete disgust come across no, your face. I was, I was thrilled to hear you talk about it the way you did. No one talks about it that way. Um, but when you look at the numbers, first, our reliance on them, that everything is the polls, even with the margin of error, mistake. Absolutely. I mean, it's an imperfect science, inherently imperfect. And elections don't have a margin of error. They are definitive, down to one vote sometimes. And this science, which is incredibly useful at certain things, should not be used to predict election outcomes. I mean, if, sure, the game of it's fun. And yes, as you said, it gets people to click on websites and tune into your show, and that's great. But it's, it's, it's in some ways irresponsible because we're conveying, or pollsters are conveying a level of confidence that's inherently flawed. And, 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 and as you said, when it influences whether people choose to vote or who they vote for, that's not what, that's not what survey science was built to do. So let's look at some of the different pieces. Your first problem is that people lie to pollsters. Put up the numbers uh, that uh, John uh, developed in this in terms of have you ever been deliberately dishonest to a pollster? Yes, I have 11%. Now, we talked about this. I talked to John a lot, by the way, because you got to have smart people around you in this business so you can know what you understand what you don't know. Um, I think people lie about whether or not they lie because they don't want to call themselves liars. But even at your number, that's high. Sure. I mean, and you're talking about, again, elections that are, you know, decided by a couple thousand, 10,000, 70,000 votes. And 11 percent is a lot. I mean, that's a that swings huge numbers one way or the other. And yeah, people have become uh, come to weaponize polls in a way that even the people answering them say I'm going to I'm going to fudge the numbers because I know the numbers I give them are going to make it on the press and that's going to influence things the way I want them to be influenced everybody's and in on the game everybody's in on the game so uh, and very interesting and a good thing that John does at civic science is he always goes to the next layer so okay so some people lie okay great we know that about everything in every regard but then there's the better question that he asks which is do you never answer political pollsters. And you see a very uneven distribution here, which can tell you why pollsters tend to get Republican outcomes wrong. Sure. Yeah. And look, this is a relatively new phenomenon. What happened in 2016 really tarnished political polling, particularly in the eyes of Republicans, because they went from, OK, we all thought Trump was going to lose to he won and the polling was wrong, but it wasn't just wrong because maybe the science was imperfect, but it, there, it was nefarious or there was some, you know, deep state conspiracy that we're going to make the poll numbers look one way because it's going to affect the, uh, the election outcome. And now we've watched the cascading effect of that change the way or re reduce the way that Republicans even participate in opinion research. I think that it was also easier for the media to say, no, it wasn't rigged. Uh, rather than to give what you need to do to complete that statement for you to not think it wasn't rigged you need for me to explain why I got it wrong. And they didn't want to say they were out of touch with that base. Right. Well, and there were also pollsters who said, no, we did get it right. Right. There's enough out there and everyone's sort of, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking what happened. And so then they don't know who to believe or what to believe. And we start to have this institutional distrust that's festering in this country already. And this is just another manifestation of that. And, and now, it's a shame. Here's the problem. Now we have a, this paradox, these two things that clash with each other. People don't trust polls, right? Look at the numbers. How confident are you in the results of political polls you see in the news? Very confident, 5%. That's the same level of confidence I have about whether or not I can still dunk a basketball. Guess what? I can't. Uh, somewhat confident, 31%. Not at all confident, 64%. Now, juxtapose that with the attention that people pay to polls. And if you look at the ratings of television, everybody watches when they have polls. Make some sense of these two things. You see cable news, October, you know, the why are these spiking? Because you're getting the sense of urgency. You're getting the number game, everything going. How do those two ideas go together? I mean, people still smoke cigarettes, Chris. I mean, right? I mean, we, we do things that we know are bad for us, whether this is conscious or unconscious. I mean, I don't know. But, but they are eye candy. As you said, they give us a sense of hope or fear. We're riveted by them. And we want to know, we want to predict the future because it makes us feel better about our lives. But again, we're dealing with an, an imperfect science here. And, and people should 
lack a certain confidence in, well, I think there's a lot of confidence to be had in survey research, opinion research done right. You better, you do for, it. For, absolutely. <laughs> but we're also not overstating the, the precision of it when it comes down to predicting something down to a few thousand votes. It's just, it's a, it's a field of science was not built to be that precise. And that's why I want you to be part of the family here and to come in and give us a sense of where the majority is. The people who are on or in the fringes, who are desperate to talk to pollsters and are driving things on social media because social media is not reality. Brother, thank you for doing this. My pleasure. We'll do it again. See you again. As John has the good ideas, he'll call and he'll talk to me and he'll say, boy, is this getting wrong out there? And he'll come back on and make it right. Thank you very much.